But I think if you find, if you can find one area of common interest to approach someone about, you'll find that they're very welcoming and it's very easy to get involved. But again, as I said, you don't have to do it at a large level, which can be intimidating. you ever have so many questions and no one to ask so they're just wasting away on google searches you'll forget about in an hour or so we had that same problem and that's why we created the rd to be podcast a resource for dietetic and nutrition students looking for answers that their peers don't have we are students macy and emily and registered dietitian carl barnes we engage in conversations and learn from rds join us weekly as we gain insight into the unique journeys of registered dietitians all over the country Welcome back to another week of the RD2B podcast. I'm your registered dietitian host, Carl Barnes. This is our weekly podcast where we sit down with a different registered, registered dietitian each week to highlight the diversity of opportunity in the profession and really dismantle the notion of there being a traditional career path um, within the dietetics profession. Um, so this week, we're really honored to be sitting down with Deanne Brandsetter from Compass Group. She's the VP of Nutrition and Wellness. Um, she has a very wonderful um, career and a accomplished career, if you will. Very, very excited to hear more about what you've done and a lot of the stuff you continue to do to this day. Thanks so much for being here. I'm honored to be here. Awesome. And I'm Emily, your RDV from the University of Maryland. So in your opinion, how would you define the term leadership, particularly in the dietetics profession? Well, if you look at a formal definition of leadership, yeah, you'll see Something to the effect that it's the art of motivating a group of people to act towards achieving a common goal. And, and that is truly what it is. Um, it has nothing to do with position or title. It, you don't need to be at a high level to exhibit leadership. You don't need to have a fancy title to exhibit leadership. It's more about your ability to gain consensus among diverse individuals working towards specific goals. I, I like to think that it's more of a focus on asking the right questions and listening versus telling. Uh, and, and that sounds a little counterintuitive, but I think that it, it truly is about asking questions and being able to be a visionary, setting some strategic direction uh, that will work towards uh, moving an organization along towards its goals. There are so many opportunities um, within the academy, within any job that you might take to exhibit leadership and to work in this capacity. First, so for your role in Compass, would you mind just describing a little bit about your role there and I guess what leadership qualities you have there? Sure. Um, I, I am so honored to lead over 2,200 registered dietitian nutritionists across a, a whole variety of compass group sectors, uh, working in diverse areas of practice, everything from K-12 schools, college and universities, food service and wellness, um, corporate dining and corporate wellness, long-term care, healthcare, and even um, we have RDs working in, with sports team training facilities and with our vending division and market, micro market division. So it truly is an opportunity to bring diverse people together. Each of these sectors, RDNs, have unique roles and responsibilities, needs and challenges. So my role really is to gain consensus on common strategic direction that supports our overall corporate strategy and to facilitate sharing of best practices, forging and forging strategic outside partnerships that bring some sort of element that, of expertise that none of us may have. I also work across all the sectors to make sure that every one of our RDNs our operators and frontline associates have access to consistent education and training on things like nutrition fundamentals, well-being, 
allergen management and sustainable food systems, which is an important new skill. You know, in terms of preparing, every year I do an inventory of my own knowledge, skills, and expertise, and look at that as compared with the changing environment that we work in, and then figure out how to fill the gap. It might be additional virtual webinars now in the pandemic uh, age. It could be shadowing someone else, seeking out a mentor, uh, looking for more training opportunities. You know, one of the examples when I was in your shoes as an RD to be, I actually joined the National Restaurant Association as a student member because I knew I was interested in food service and restaurants and wanted to learn a lot more about that model. And also over the years, I've cultivated many chef buddies that I rely on for growing my culinary skills. Of course, so since you have such a big role as we just heard within Compass Group, do you experience any anxiousness or I don't wanna say doubts, but any thoughts of like, wow, this is a big role. How do I, you know, fill it? I think there are easy ways to ease your entry into leadership positions. Um, you can start by volunteering at a more local level. Uh, for example, take on a leadership role with your student nutrition society uh, or most state academy, state and local affiliates really welcome student volunteers. They're looking for you and that can quickly lead to leadership experience. And finally, there are several leadership opportunities with at the national level within the academy. For example, just one example that I'm really familiar with, Dietitians and Business and Communications, the practice group, has a student executive committee member position. And some years it's really hard to fill. So I'm perplexed that there aren't more students who are looking for these opportunities or really interested in your feedback on how the academy can better publicize the national level uh, student opportunities that are available. And then the other thing I will say is that uh, remember to be welcoming of everyone, especially peers who don't look like you or, or who might come from a different background. From our profession to succeed, we need more RDNs of color and from diverse backgrounds and we need to be sure that as a leader or as you're pursuing leadership positions, that you are welcoming and inclusive of everyone. Great. So since you mentioned the Academy, how do you think students can best optimize the resources offered by the Academy if we don't necessarily know that they're available? There are so many students. Um, I, I, I would start out by becoming a student member. Hopefully all of you are. It's a really good value and also includes membership in one state affiliate. But in addition to that, join some of the dietetic practice groups or member interest groups uh, on, in topic areas or um, that you can affiliate with, areas that you're interested in. And there is such a wide variety of practice groups. These are also very inexpensive for student members. Um, generally, uh, additional membership in a DPG or MIG is maybe $20, um, sometimes $15 for a student member. And then check out any and all of those opportunities to volunteer. Um, look on the Academy website, look through the individual state affiliate website, look at the DPG and MIG websites because they're all different. Um, and they all provide information on leadership positions, how to get involved, um, and all of the different resources and how to take advantage of those. I will say that um, you also might wanna check out the foundation, the Academy Foundation website, because that is a great source of information on scholarships and grants, um, which is really a huge benefit of Academy membership. There is also something called Student Scoop which is an e-newsletter written for students by students. And if you're interested in that, uh, by checking out the Academy website and the student section on it, you can become involved in that and maybe contribute an article to it. 
There's something called school spirit at Fancy. So you could get your program involved and the five programs with the highest percentage of students attending Fancy uh, get a VIP meet and greet with members of the Academy Board of Directors. And then finally, don't forget about career starter dues programs. Um, the student rates for membership or the discounted rates for membership don't just apply when you're a student. For the first five years of practice postgraduate, you have a graduated dues program. So you're not paying full dues until you're five years out. Um, so again, I, I, I think check out the websites of all of those uh, all of those options, both eatright.org plus the state affiliate plus DPGs and MIGs, and you will have a plethora of resources available to you. Great, thank you for sharing that. So speaking of the Academy, would you mind talking a little bit about your leadership role as the treasurer elect? Sure, um, I am so honored to be uh, treasurer elect. And I think that there are two, actually three, um, three big areas of focus. One, I am a member of the board of directors. So responsible for uh, executing, helping to execute the strategic plan for the academy and focusing on strategic initiatives. The second big focus is making sure that we are fiscally responsible. And we have a wonderful finance team that works on staff at the academy. I think many students don't understand the role um, or how the board of directors interacts with the staff. And the staff are really responsible for executing the, the strategic plan on a day-to-day -day basis, for operations on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, I, as treasurer elect, I don't have to do the accounting. Um, the chief financial officer from the staff does, uh, manages the whole accounting team um, in our finance portfolio. But my role is to be a checks and balance and make sure that we're fiscally responsible, that we're making strategic decisions about finances of the academy. And then finally, um, I also have a role on the foundation board, and uh, they're looking at how foundation funds are spent in providing scholarships, grants, research opportunity, um, and even things, uh, most recently, the disaster relief fund, which uh, some RDs aren't avail aware of, but something that you should be aware of as a student if you live in an area that experiences a major disaster, a fire, a flood, a hurricane, you are eligible to apply for funds from the Academy Disaster Relief Fund. And that's managed by the foundation. And one of the, my roles as treasurer elect uh, is to make sure that that fund remains fully funded and viable so that we always have disaster relief money available uh, to provide to members in need. Great. And since you wear so many hats within, you know, the academy and the dietetic profession, what do you think is the main set of skills that rd to be should look to have and just registered dietitian should have in general? You know, I, I, I think that the most important skill that you can develop is critical listening, listening and hearing, and most importantly, asking the right questions. Um, certainly, I have used uh, a lot of communication skills, uh, budgeting and budget management skills, um, but the most important thing really has been listening, hearing, asking the right questions. I think increasingly important in leadership roles today, whether it be my role in Compass, also on the board of directors, um, is humility. Uh, being willing to critically look at yourself and understand how much you don't know um, about whatever, um, your inherent biases, 
um, you know, what you don't know about various roles and responsibilities. It's been interesting as part of Compass Group because when I left the world of clinical dietetics um, 30 years ago, I thought I would never be back in that position again. And yet I work on a day-to-day -day basis with a lot of clinical dietitians. So um, being able to understand, to look at yourself critically and, and understand that you don't know everything, that you need to pull other people in, you need to tap into their expertise, and uh, you need to be humble about what you don't know and asking questions. I feel like that's a great piece of advice because I feel like a lot of students are afraid to ask questions, afraid that, you know, it's like a dumb question or a silly question and just having people reinforce that there's no such thing and just ask the questions. I think that's great, valuable advice. So for students that are worried or anxious about getting into a leadership position, could maybe because they're introverted or just that they're just afraid they wouldn't do well, what kind of advice do you have for them? I would say start at a start at a small local level. It's very, it's really not intimidating if you volunteer at a local level. Um, you know, maybe it's your college or university or internship nutrition society, nutrition affiliation group, whatever. Um, again, as I said, the local affiliates, state affiliates welcome student volunteers. Oftentimes you can go to those meetings, participate virtually, or when we have live meetings again, um, go as a group, go with some of your peers so that you have people with you that you feel comfortable with. And then I think, you know, it is, I, you know, I am naturally a little introverted. Um, and the hardest thing in the world is for me to go up to strangers sometimes and just talk to them. But I think if you find, if you can find one area of common interest to approach someone about, you'll find that they're very welcoming and it's very easy to get involved. But again, as I said, you don't have to do it at a large level, which can be intimidating. I, I think you can start small um, and grow your leadership ability, grow your comfort level, um, and I think you'll be surprised. Academy leadership right now is really interested in what students think, what students have to say, um, how students feel about the field and um, what we need to do to be more welcoming and inclusive of students of all types. Awesome. And then I guess my last question is, what has been the most rewarding part of your dietetic career thus far? Gosh, there have been so many things. I, I, I would, I'm not sure I can say one um, or I, I can choose one. I, I would say that I am grateful for the variety of experiences that I've had working for Compass Group and being able to work with dietitians in so many different areas of practice um, because it really, has given me an appreciation for the great breadth and scope of our profession and our ability to influence so many other people um, in, in the world, really. Um, you know, I, I'm just thinking the Olympics just started yesterday. And one of the highlights of my career with Compass Group was being the Olympic Village dietitian when Compass Group did the food service for the Salt Lake City 2002 Olympics. Um, that was just such a highlight and such a great opportunity. From an academy standpoint, I have learned so much from various leadership positions within the academy and have also learned how valuable the academy is, especially from a policy standpoint. It's, it's an area that I think students could become a lot more involved in the area of policy, um, public policy and advocacy is critical to ensure that we have a viable profession, that we are seen as the food and nutrition professionals, uh, and that we receive reimbursement and, and, and are paid fairly for our services. So I, I, I've learned from 
every opportunity for leadership, both in the academy and in Compass Group. And I'm grateful for um, all of the great people that I've met through both of those. Great. Well, thank you so much for taking time out and speaking to us today. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me and good luck to all of you RDs to be.